everyone. Welcome. So, you know, it's, I think it's, it's nicer that we do this rather than just talking at people that we, we have a, a bit of a conversation. This, I think the, 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 the idea behind this was that we would try and give people a flavour of the, of the type of things that we're doing, uh, what's going on in the, in the European Union in terms of funded projects. And one that we're particularly proud of uh, is the be because it's been gotten through IC4, essentially, um, and we have some wonderful partners that, that you, you'll learn about, is this Cloud Lightning project, just funded at the start of the year. And um, I just want to give you a flavour of what it is and give you an idea of the, the, the type of thing that we're doing. I'm not going to go into great technical details. I'm trying to give you, um, if you like, the elevator pitch <laughs> so that you'll say, well, you know, what's that all about? But if you want to ask technical questions, then please do. And we would be sort of more on comfortable ground doing that. So what I'll do is I'll just say who we are, give you an, an overview of the consortium. Um, then what we postulate as a typical cloud usage, how the cloud is used at the moment, that's not 100% true for everybody, but it's kind of the interesting usage from our perspective. Um, then I'll tell you what we're trying to do, uh, how we propose to do it. We've done some initial, initial qualitative studies to try to um, uh, validate what we've done. So I'll, I'll just give you an indication of what they are, and then we'll just finish with some of the challenges. But you know, jump in any time if you want. If you want to ask a question, or if if, the, if I say something that, that you don't understand, um, not because you don't understand it, because it, I'm not clear, obviously. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, this is who we are. We're, we're uh, Intel, Shannon, I Ireland, Dublin City University, uh, Duth in uh, Greece, and then Cert in Greece as well. So we've got two Greek partners. George is from Duth. Um, then we have uh, Dana from the Institute e Austria Timisoara in Romania. We have Maxler te Technologies from the UK and the USA. Uh, Tobias Becker will be joining us later. He's flying in at the moment and he's going to talk a bit about uh, their technologies. We've got the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, t Science and Technology, and of course UCC. So we have uh, you know a broad spread of uh, of people there ac across across Europe with. Um, a huge diversity of specialities in, in, in different technologies. Um, now, so what we postulate, the, or what we, we, we notice that the cloud is kind of used in this, in this way, right? We have the, cu currently we, we would contend that the customer has to do all the hard work. If you're a customer, you want to use the cloud, you have to research the various offerings that are available so that you can build and compile your solution accordingly. Now, if it's software as a service, that's probably not dif that difficult to do. You know, if it's um, platform as a service, maybe it's a little bit more difficult, because you, again, you've got to use that platform, you've got to populate it, et cetera. If it's infra infrastructure as a service, effectively, you're going out there, you're building everything from the infrastructure that the, the provider is providing to you. So you, as a customer, you want to know does that provider give me the type of hardware that I need to, to solve my problem? I really need to know how to solve my problem, and then I must go and deploy my solution on the cloud. So you're doing all the hard work, right? Now, in doing that, you'll find that you're kind of targeting the lowest common denominator to facilitate portability between clouds. So you look at different, different offerings, and you say, well, if I go for this cloud provider, that's a very specialist offering, and then I might, I'll be locked into that, into, into that cloud provider. So if I, if I don't go for that solution, I back off a little bit so that I can spread my offering across different providers, then I get more portability. Again, what I'm trying to say is the customer is doing a lot of work. Um, the solution often ends up either being completely generic then, um, in, in which case you have a, a, an opportunity cost. You, 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 it's... it's um, you, you lose the opportunity of having a very specific solution and getting the most out of the cloud because you're trying to build in portability. Um, or you're, f you're faced with using some specialist features which then tie you to that provider. So you see what I'm trying to say? You go for portability or you go for spe the, the sp special uh, implementation. In that case, you lose, port you, you lose portability. Now, in that scenario, the, 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 the customer's kind of losing. Now we, that's, that's what we're thinking. And all the provider has to do is just make sure that they have enough machinery there to, to, uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, provide for those customers. You know. so, and that's called over-provisioning. 
Okay, so that over provision, lots of machinery, throw machinery at it, and then uh, it'll all work. If providers are wringing their hands, all we've got to do is look after the machinery. Um, now, so what are we trying to do in that scenario? What we're trying to do is we want to make cloud computing more accessible to the average customer. We don't think that's acceptable. We don't want the customer to have to do all that work. But at the same time, we don't want to penalize the, uh, the provider. The provider, um, there are benefits to the provider if the provider has more control over their offering, more control over their machinery, and they don't have customers reaching in and basically uh, using their machinery you know, in ways that is, is, is not very visible to, to, the, to the provider. So, that, for example, they can't make their, uh, their, their machines very efficient because they can't guarantee that the customer is using their machines in an efficient way. Okay? So wh what you find then in the typical cloud is that your average server is probably less than 20% utilized. Now, in that case, you're burning electricity. Right? If the machine was working at 80% utilization, you're using the same amount of electricity, okay? uh, you probably see no degradation in, in the quality of service, um, but you're getting a lot more work out of the machine. So the provider wants to move there, and there's, there's a real need for that because the current model is not sustainable. The cloud is now approaching 10% of the world's electricity con uh, consumption. And this is a recent figure we saw somewhere. Right? So that's, that's huge. And we have to reduce that. It's not sustainable. Now, what we also want to do, we want to try to exploit heterogeneity because we see that there are different types of resources out there it's needed for different um, applications, different specialist applications. And getting at that heterogeneity is a very difficult thing to do, especially for the customer. And we want to dem in, in, in addition, we want to demonstrate our approach using a very challenging application domain. In other words, we're going to look at high-performance computing and seeing how far we can go uh, down the high-performance computing route using cloud. So that's what we're trying to do in, in, in a kind of a nutshell, in one slide. Now, it's, it's, ver it's challenging, as you can imagine. Now, to do that, we, see we, make, we need to make a very clean break between the, the customer and the provider. And what's that clean break? What's that interface? For us, that's a service description. It's a service level interface. It gives us, as I said, this clean break between the customer and the, and the provider. The customer is not reaching over that barrier. It's, it's just interfacing with what service can you give me? Functionally, what can you give me? Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not dictating what kind of machines you have to, to, to uh, provide to give me that service. As a customer, I'm only interested in the service. So specify the service. You as the provider, you provide the service, and you manage your machines to do that, to, the, to do that provision. Um, so the, the interface then should not require the customer to specify the resource requirements. And then they don't have to do that research. They don't have to worry about those things. They only specify what they know. They know about service. They know the service that they want, and they specify that. But there's a catch. If we do that, what we're doing is we're putting all the complexity of managing all that services back onto the provider. So previously, the customer was doing all the work. Now we're saying the provider has to do all the work to deliver that service to the, to, to the customer. And you end up with a huge, complex system when you do that. Now, we can't underestimate just how, how complicated that, that, that actually is, right? Because you can imagine the private provider is getting these service descriptions. They want to respond to those service descriptions. They want to say, how can I, how can I provide the service? What do I have in the back end? What's available now? What will be available in the future? And you're talking about tens of thousands of machines, you're talking about tens of thousands of service requests coming in you know, at a very frequent rate. So how do you do that? How do you manage that? And there's only one way we know how to manage that kind of complexity, and that's through uh, self-organization. Okay? Self-organization is the kind of thing you find in nature. Right? We, we're all trying to self-organize. You know, according to Darwin, we all sort of where the sum of these, of these simple components that are put together and emergent behavior uh, results, et cetera. Now, and this was sort of worked on real way back as Alan Turing sort of recognized this stuff and you know, if it's good enough for Alan Turing, it's good enough for me anyway. So this is our definition of self-organization where we have uh, synergetic activities among elements where no single element acts as a coordinator and the global pattern of behavior 
um, is, is distributed among these, these elements. So how do we kind of bring that into the, into the scene? Well, the idea is that we, we're, we want, we're, we're, we're proposing a self-organizing model that sort of is analogous to, to responding to a, a call for funding proposals. You know the way at the moment that um, funding bodies like Enterprise Ireland or SFI will put out a call and say, you know, we want proposals in the following areas. That, that, that's almost like a service description. It goes out to the, to the community. Researchers get together and say, you know, we can, we can collaborate here. I can bring my speciality and I can do this bit and you can do that bit. And little coalitions are formed, and little groups are formed, and then they bid for the funding. Okay? So it is something that's done from the bottom up. It's a bottom up, self-organized activity in which these individual elements propose themselves, they form coalitions, they bid for the service. And we see that happening in the cloud where the researchers are replaced by these resource elements in the cloud. So think of every resource element, every server, every disk, every database, everything that's in the cloud as having this sort of intelligence that can allow it to do its own local organization, its own local administration and say, well, I'm this busy, I've got this capacity, there's this request coming in, will I take part? Well, will that, will that, will that, will that be good for me? You know, will it make me more busy and bring me into the 80% utilization? Um, if so, and can I do it easily? Yeah, then I'll, I'll par become part of the consortium. I'll join the consortium I'll, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll bid. But we'll find that we get lots of consortia being actually created in the, in the cloud at the same time based on the same service um, request. Now the interesting thing comes when you see that if your cloud is made up of heterogeneous resources, different types of resources, and some of those resources are very um, specific and specialist and can respond to specific parts of that request, service request very effectively, then you'll find some consortia being more appropriate than others. Some of them has the, have the, the specialists, they've got the expert in the area, you know, they've got, they've got the, the dream group to apply for the funding. Others may be more pedestrian, you know, but you know, we'll get there, we'll be slower, but we won't cost as much, okay? And maybe we can do it now. So you have this heterogeneous response coming from the cloud, and we then, what we do at this point is we, 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 we bottle it a bit. We say, well, okay, the customer then decides what the customer wants at that point, when they're presented with a number of options. Now you could um, have some filtering uh, on that, but that again is just, that, that those are details. So we have this automatic uh, configuration and assembly of these coalitions, automatic release of resources then when the task or the service is retired. So the, 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 the cloud responds, when the service is over, the resources go back into the pool and they're ready for the next proposal. So we have this kind of situation where, just as I described, we have um, the, the user, sending your service request into the gateway. I don't know if there's a, is there a pointer in this, Dan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, into the gateway. Um, this gateway service uh, propagates the service request through these heterogeneous resources. There are coalitions that are formed, creating these service tenders. And then these service tenders are propagated back through the gateway to the, to the, the customer. The customer will choose one, and then that's automatically deployed and goes into service. That's, that's basically our idea. That's what we want to do. <laughs> okay. um, now, around that, there are lots of details. And I'm kind of running short in time, but I just pointed those details. So if we, if we visualize our cloud here um, a, as being made up of all of these servers, and these, th these are little access point in points into the cloud, so service requests can come into all of these access points. Um, and as soon as they come into the access points, they arrive at these internal uh, uh, service platforms here. And they, in turn, then will propagate the service descriptions and will decompose them into functional, functional elements that the, the server and the, the resources understand. And then that will happen in many places. So a number of coalitions will, will form, a number of tenders will result, and out will come the, uh, the, the smorgasbord, the menu for the, for the customer. There's some basic tenants that we... That, that we uh, um, adhere to the components 
are autonomous, they're aware of the environment, they're goal-driven behavior of individual components. So individual components, you can say, well, what do you want to do as an individual component? Do you want to maximize your, your, utili your utility? Do you want to um, maximize your energy um, um, uh, conservation? Or do you, you know, those kind of things. And we can build those into the algorithms and self-organizing algorithms. So they include things like well, minimizing, as I said, minimizing energy consumption, et cetera. Um, then these goals are achieved then in concert through collaboration. Um, so what we did then in a kind of a qualitative, to try and as a proof of concept, we, we simulated 9 million components, 9 million using Amazon. Cloud is a wonderful thing. <laughs> and in these 9 million um, components, we, 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 we created our, our, our model, we deployed it in, in Amazon. It was basically an, a numerical simulation using queuing theory and continuous time Markov chains. Um, these are just details. Um, and then what we were trying to do was get a kind of, a, does this work? Does this thing uh, behave in the way we expect it to behave? So we, we, add, we asked the question, does the bidding mechanism allow uh, the system to effectively respond to external requests? So we, we, we really just hammered the system with tens of thousands of requests per, per bucket. We broke those requests into, into buckets. We just threw them at the system. And this is the way the system kind of behaved to us. And we found actually in this case that we had 99.9% um, success in actually forming a coalition to respond to, the, to respond to the service. Now that's given the kind of the configuration that we had. We have, don't forget we have 9 million <coughs> elements in there, so it was kind of easy enough. But we find that there, you know, the the um, the, uh, the, the, the we we got figures that indicated to us that this was a viable approach. These, these are not really qua uh, quantitative figures; it's just qualitative. It's very qualitative. But yeah, this is worth looking at further. So this is the kind of thing we were doing. Um, when, when you said that your request hmm. failed, and then the previous slide, yeah. It was because we couldn't form a coalition to serve to to uh, answer the service because at the time there wasn't the resources available within the system to provide that service. Some time, so some time out. Exactly. So there was a time. Exactly, there was a time out. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll move on from that a bit. So some of the challenges then, in that system, we you know, we. You can imagine that that is kind of, um, there's a lot of detail behind there, right? What we're interested in doing is looking at creating a system like that, but also in that system have automatic generation of service level agreements. So that within the system, the coalitions themselves and, and the, the rules of coalition formation adhere to a service level description, a service level agreement, okay? So they would only take part in a, in a, in a coalition if they could guarantee that they're going to um, uh, result in a, uh, a coalition that could meet the service level agreement. Cloud service description language obviously is going to be a very difficult thing to do, right? And Dana and Dana's groups are, is, is, an, is an expert, is, are experts in that area. And uh, she'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a little while. The bidding algorithm, the self-organization algorithm, these things, we have very embryonic uh, algorithms at the moment. Making those more specific and more uh, detailed to derive the kind of goals that we want are the, are the kind of things we're going to do in this project. We're moving from, um, you know, the, the, at, the, at the moment the, the cloud uses monitoring for resource allocation. So the cloud sort of this, has this centralized monitoring view of the system and it says, well, what's, what's available? Yeah, and based on what's available, can, 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 uh, can make decisions, resource allocation decisions. Now, with self-organization, you lose that overview. However, you can still use monitoring to monitor the health of the system. So you can see how healthy my system is, how utilized my resources are, but not use the monitoring, which is a very centralized and out-of-date information. Once you gather the information from a complex system like that, it's out-of-date. <laughs> So you shouldn't be making it to use or using it to make decisions, but you can use it to make diagnosis of how the system is 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 behaving and where it's not as healthy. 
Self-organizing systems could be integrated into the existing structures of, of, of existing clouds. So it's a very, it's, it's a model that can, can be evolved into existing deployments. And as such, we think it may be the way forward. So that's for us is where Cloud Lightning is going. Um, George is going to, um, to talk a little bit about um, the other side of Cloud Lightning, which is the, the HPC side of, of the, other the other side of the story. Um, and so, so George will, 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 will be up next. Dana will talk about the service description. And then Tobias, welcome Tobias, <laughs> will talk a little bit about some of our specialist hardware that we expect to find in our test bed. And, and uh, th that will include things like data flow engines. And we'll, we'll talk about that when it's time to.